Hello there, thanks for tuning in. Paul from Yorkshire Outdoorsman here. Panic over, it seems. As of midnight uh, yesterday, or today, uh, pigeon shooting is back, it seems. Um, the new general license has been issued uh, for, I'm going to concentrate on wood pigeon shooting because that's predominantly what I do. Uh, I suspect that's predominantly why people would come to this video in the first place. Um, it seems that the new general license is, according to Basque and other organisations, fit for purpose. Um, we'll leave that up to you to decide for yourselves. Um, although you can go out shooting now, please make sure you read this and understand it before you do go out, um, just to make sure you don't fall foul of any, any laws. Um, I've had a quick look at it. I haven't gone through the whole thing yet. Um, in depth but I've had a quick look at it and it does look a lot less complicated than the previous farce was um, yes it's still nine pages long or ten pages long or something like that um, but a lot of those pages are uh, things like um, advice and, and notes and things like that the actual legislation part of it what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do um, is is kept fairly small uh, in comparison to the other one um, so go and have a look at it um, and see what you think uh, but in the meantime we're just gonna have a quick a quick scan a quick look at what I've discovered so far so here we are issued by the Department for Environment Food and Rural Affairs or DEFRA as we, uh, as we know it as the usual legal basis, we'll not go into that. Um, the overview, yeah, well the license permits landowners, occupiers and other authorised persons to carry out a range of otherwise prohibited activities against the species of wild bird listed on the license. The license may only be relied on where the activities are carried out for the purposes specified and users must comply with the license in terms of conditions yeah we can expect that that's nothing out of the ordinary obviously registration is not required um, recording and reporting well they do say that it's probably wise to record um, what you're doing uh, where you're shooting what you're shooting how much you're shooting this kind of thing but it's not a legal requirement so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I know a lot of us do as anyway as a matter of course. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, right, this part here is talking about the um, species of bird that this license uh, pertains to. Uh, we're looking at carrion crow, cor uh, Corvus coroni, whatever, however you pronounce its silly Latin name. Uh, Jackdaw, Magpie, Feral Pigeon, Rook, Wood Pigeon, Canada Goose, Muck Parakeet, Ringnet Parakeet and Egyptian Goose. So it, it covers quite a lot of birds does this one. Um, license Conditions. Here we go. Now if you remember the last one, 31 whatever it was, this went on forever. Um, in this case it doesn't really go on that much it's it's um, it's not too bad so in respect to the species listed what this license permits before using this license reasonable endeavors must have been made to achieve the purpose in question using lawful methods not covered by this license unless their use would be impractical or without effect disproportionate in the circumstances that's fairly straightforward when using this license, reasonable endeavours must continue to be made to achieve the purpose in question, using lawful methods not covered by this license, unless their use would be impractical, without effect, or disproportionate in the circumstances. This license must not authorise the use of any method of killing or taking which is prohibited by Section 5 or Section 8 of the 1981 Act, blah blah blah. Yeah, so let's look at this and how I see it, when you, you know using this license, you must take reasonable endeavours to make sure that um, 
the purpose has been achieved. So, in the last license, they gave loads of examples of reasonable endeavours, really stupid things like pretending to be a scarecrow and the stuff that um, was so ridiculous we had to laugh at it. This is quite concise in its, in its way, in, in as much as it doesn't give loads and loads of examples putting the onus on us to, to make sure all these things are done like oiling eggs and all this kind of malarkey, it, it mentions nothing about other methods, although you have to be seen to be doing them or trying them, which to be honest I think before all this licensed palaver is what we were doing anyway. So, so hopefully that isn't any different to what it used to be back in the, what I like to call the good old days. The part of this that um, I'm not 100% sure about and I would have some concerns with would be the um, how different people may interpret that paragraph. Um, different people may interpret it differently, uh, which I suppose potentially could lead to some some issues with legalities and stuff if we're not careful. For example, it says you must continue to use other methods. Now my point is, and the point that I had with the previous farce of a license was it said you must continue, you must show that you've tried other methods, right? Before you're allowed to shoot them. If those methods don't work or in, in practical, etc., then you can shoot them. But then you think about it and think, well, wait a minute. If those methods don't work, then why, under the terms of the license, must we continue those efforts whilst we're shooting when they've already proven not to work? So they're asking us to, to use methods that we know don't work as well as shooting them. That seemed to me a pointless exercise. There is a little bit of that in here, but it's not as specific as, as the other one, so it's a little bit easier to understand, perhaps. And the rest of it, pretty much is information and advice uh, some important things to remember which we we knew anyway there's nothing new here um, where it talks about section um, section 2 shotguns etc uh, sorry not section 2 shotguns my uh, my apologies um, semi-automatic shotguns that can that are capable of holding more than two rounds and all that kind of thing which is banned you're not allowed to, to use those which which was always the case before as I understand it anyway um, limits of the license. Uh, license permits action only for the purpose specified in what this license permits. Yeah, we know. So basically, although it's it's like nine pages long or something, ten pages long, eleven pages long. Um, the actual part of the license that would concern pigeon shooters um, is quite small in comparison to to, to the last lot. Um, I'm not saying just read that part and ignore everything else. I'm not saying that at all. I think it's important that we all read this and understand it thoroughly, just to make sure we don't fall foul of the law. But so far, it's looking good. Bearing in mind that this license is up for renewal, I think, on the 29th of February, I think, in the new year. So it, could, it will be reviewed then. And hopefully there won't be any changes, and if there are changes, hopefully there will be minimum changes. But uh, so far so good, it looks like pigeon shooting is back. Um, let's all read the general license, make sure we understand it, and then we can get out doing what we enjoy. So, there you have it. I think it's fair to say that Chris Packham and his cronies will be pretty much seething right now. And I fully expect there to be another legal challenge. But things are looking up, things are looking good so far. Um, maybe we can start um, putting videos on again um, about pigeon shooting. Um, I suspect that the content of pigeon shooting videos will, will change quite dramatically. Yeah, I suspect that uh, the videos will, uh, will tend to show some of the other methods that they are trying in accordance with the license, um, just as a, as a sort of video proof that they're doing what they should be doing. 
and not just shooting. I suspect that will be a lot of that. So thank you for watching. Um, good shooting. And see you next time.